called the Burrard Inlet. Uh, the Burrard Inlet is kind of a sliver of ocean that separates the city of Vancouver from the North Shore mountain range. Uh, the Burrard Inlet was named after Sir Harry Burrard, who was a naval captain on one, um, George Vancouver's ship. Uh, interesting fact about George Vancouver, this guy that we named our entire city after, he was only in Vancouver for one day. So we named our entire city after this guy who only gave us one day of appreciation. Um, apparently we couldn't have called it Gassy City, so it had to be Vancouver. So that's how Vancouver got its name. And if you guys look across the way, uh, across the Burrard Inlet, and see all those city lights, that is North Vancouver. North Vancouver is a separate city from Vancouver, but still kind of considered more of a suburb of Vancouver, even though it's technically a separate city. And you guys see in the Burrard Inlet, there's a little boat coming in across the distance. Uh, that is the sea bus. The sea bus is part of our regular transit system, and the sea bus is the best way to get to North Vancouver. Do you guys see closer to our shore? There's three cement rectangles sticking out into the ocean. Yeah. That is uh, the sea bus terminal connected to Waterfront Station. So the sea bus is a really great way to see the Burrard Inlet. The voyage across takes about 15 minutes, and it's only about two dollars and seventy-five cents to go across. So pretty cheap. Uh, once you go across to North Vancouver, the sea bus drops you off at the um, Montsale Quay Market which is a public market, kind of like Granville Island, but a little cheaper as well, which is always awesome. So you guys can take the sea bus across to North Vancouver, eat at the Lonsdale Quay Market, get phenomenal views of Vancouver from the other side of the inlet, and then use the same ticket to take the sea bus back. So the sea bus is a really great way to get lunch and fill an hour if you're downtown in Vancouver. And if you guys look a little farther to the left side, do you see all those lit up houses on the hill to the left? That is West Vancouver. West Vancouver is one of the richer areas in Vancouver. 70% uh, of the houses in West Vancouver are over a million dollars. So it's pretty much just comprised of mansions. Uh, Oprah Winfrey used to own a place there and sold it recently. So that kind of tells you about uh, how much money you need to have to live in that area. So that is West Vancouver and North Vancouver. And if you guys look right in the middle of North and West Vancouver, do you see that one mountain with kind of the trail yes. of lights on it? Yes. So that's Grouse Mountain. Oh. Have any of you guys heard of Grouse? Yes. 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 Yeah. So for those of you who haven't heard or who haven't heard of the Grouse Grind, uh, the Grouse Grind is a very famous hike associated with Grouse Mountain. Uh, the Grouse Grind is a 3,000 step hike at a 35 degree inclination up the mountain. Uh, nicknamed Mother Nature's Stairmaster, you're pretty much just walking up um, man-made and naturally made stairs for about an hour and a half. Uh, it's a grueling hike. I did it last year and was cursing myself the whole way through. But there are benefits to doing the Grouse Grind. So if you do the grouse grind up the mountain, you get to go up the mountain and you only pay a $10 fee to take your gondola back down. Or if you don't want to put yourself through such physical pain, uh, you can take a $40 gondola ride up the mountain. So it depends uh, how much you're willing to do to save that $30. Uh, but either way, there are phenomenal views from the top of the mountain. You can see the entire city center of Vancouver. And they also have two grizzly bears that live in the mountain. Their names are Grinder and Kula. They were actually abandoned by their mother as cubs and were kind of adopted by the Grouse Mountains. You can check out those grizzly bears when you're visiting the mountain as well. And if you guys look to the left side, do you see that lit up bridge over there? So that's the Lionsgate Bridge. Uh, the Lionsgate Bridge is what connects you to the Sea and Sky Highway, which is how you get to Whistler and Squamish. And the Lionsgate Bridge was built by the same architect as the Golden Gate Bridge. So a lot of people claim that it's kind of a smaller green version of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. So on the other side is the Sea to Sky Highway, and then on the opposite side coming into our city center, that huge patch of dark trees to the left side that you can see, that is all Stanley Park. So Stanley Park is a huge park, um, actually 10% larger than New York Central Park, and it was recently rated one of the top urban parks in the world by TripAdvisor, so everybody in Vancouver is pretty excited about that. Uh, Stanley Park is pretty famous for its seawall. So it has this walking, biking, scootering, rollerblading, kind of anything you want type of path that runs along the entire perimeter of the park. So if you guys wanted to walk around the entire park, did that, oh, you did that today. Yeah. Oh, nice. Did you walk the entire thing? Or? Yes. Oh, good for you. Walk hotel down to the park and then walk around the park. So you know how long it takes. It takes about three and a half hours or. Yeah, so it takes about three and a half hours to walk the entire perimeter of the park. 
Um, if you guys do rent a bike, it takes about an hour and a half. Um, I highly suggest renting a bike. Uh, it's a pretty easy bike ride because it's all flat and there are tons of places you can rent a bike um, around the park and around Gastown as well. So Stanley Park also has beautiful beaches, uh, a rose garden, totem poles, a pool, a mini pot course, a lagoon, a lake, but it's also home to the Vancouver Aquarium. So the Vancouver Aquarium is a pretty ethical aquarium um, in the sense of how an aquarium can be. Um, it's a very ethical aquarium because they really strive for the conservation of marine life. So a lot of the animals living in the aquarium are born in captivity and cannot be released back into the wild. Or they have conservation programs where they train animals to live back in the wild and release them back into the wild and monitor them in order to gain more information about them. So it's a really great, um, it's a really great aquarium in that sense. Uh, the aquarium has a lot of marine life kind of specific from British Columbia's coast. But they also have marine life from all over the globe. They have beluga whales, uh, penguins, dolphins, otters, kind of anything your heart desires when it comes to marine life, uh, you'll find at the Vancouver Aquarium. And for those of you um, who are looking at this big white building sticking out into the ocean with the sails on top of it, that is Canada Place. Canada Place was built uh, in 1986 for the World's Fair Expo. And the theme of the expo was transportation and communication. So they tried to make it look like a boat and they succeeded. Uh, the 10 points of all the sails represent the 10 provinces of Canada. And Canada Place is a cruise ship hub. So all the um, ships going to and from Canada Place are going to Alaska and back from Alaska. Canada Place is also a convention center and it has a lot of really cool restaurants and shops inside. And if you guys look a little bit to the um, to the left side of Canada Place, do you see kind of a black building on the shore with a kind of a triangular point sticking out? Do you guys see that building a little farther away on the shore? It's a pretty dark building. It's a dark top. That is the Vancouver Convention Center. The Vancouver Convention Center actually has brass on the top of it. Do you guys know what brass is for on the top of the building? Yeah. Uh, so it's actually insulation. Um, so the insulation on the top of the convention center actually keeps the building cool in the uh, summer and heats it during the winter. As well, they also have a wild honeybee farm located on the top of the convention center. The wild honeybees actually pollinate the plants on the top of the convention center. And they also have a uh, fish hatchery located in underneath the convention center. So there's a lot of stuff going on at the convention center. Um, it's kind of a tribute to Vancouver's green living, green lifestyle reputation, um, because it's a very ecologically friendly building. Um, so that is the convention center. And the last thing I'll point out to you guys on this side is the Vancouver Sun and Province building. So that building right in front of us that says Province and Vancouver Sun, those are two newspapers. Uh, but the cool part about that building is actually what's located on top. So you guys see that little red light on the top of the building? Like it's kind of on, on, like on the top of the glass dome. That's actually an air traffic control tower. So that controls the uh, helicopters and the seaplanes coming in and out of the Barrara Inlet. Yeah. And I'll also point out Port Metro to you guys. Port Metro is this huge port to the right side that's all lit up. Port Metro is one of the largest ports in Canada and it serves over 130 economies. Uh, Port Metro is what really got the economy of Vancouver going um, back in the day and we mainly trade with China and Japan with that port. Do you guys have any questions about this stuff? Alright, so I'll take you guys to the uh, west side where our financial district is located.